Shalom. All praises to the Heavenly Father, Anuku Yah. Praise be to the Earthly Mother, the Pachamama, and all of her earthly angels, the Erkadeshoe. Praise be to the Holy Spirit, the Kahe, in the name of his only begotten Son, Matsa the Lamb, unification to the nation. Okay, so I have a lot of things that I wanted to speak on, to touch on, um, but a lot of them are incomplete ideas, so I'm just releasing videos when I can give you a bit, something a bit more tangible. So today, we're going to touch on uh, what we spoke about a few weeks ago and what I also mentioned last week, and that was the Western Interior Seaway. And I corrected it, and I said, I actually believe that I was probably the Jordan, right? I actually believe the Western Interior Seaway was the Jordan. But then I was just like, okay, so is the bottom of the Jordan, is that still the Atlantic Ocean? And it could be, but we're going to examine something else. Now, if you if you guys can see this map, I'm going to click on it. This is supposed to be the late uh, Crustaceous period, according to them, right? But we're going to go down. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this. Whenever it loads, I have a lot of tabs open. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, going all the way up into Canada, you know, the Rocky Mountains, um, they're saying that this was covered with water. I kindly disagree, but I believe pretty much that Canaan was the strip of land that went from the Andes all the way up to the Rockies up here. And water was covering the outside of it and it was also flowing through it, right? It was a Pacific coastal piece of land, a large strip of land that went from North to South America. So I'm guessing that maybe this was actually the Jordan. This, this piece of water right here that you can see that's flowing down into Chile, that's right outside uh, the mountains. It's flowing upward and it's getting here. Now, the water, I believe that it flows from south to north. The Atlantic Ocean water in the bottom part, it flows this way, as you can see my mouth moving. It flows this way, and then it flows into the Caribbean Sea. And then that's about it. So, again, the Jordan can be either or. It can be this, or it can be this. Um, it's one of the two. So that's what I want to show you there. We're going to get into a little bit more. Okay, it's the same map. Let's go. So this is a, something else that I was looking at. Um... They were saying that when this was connected, there was some sort of giant water pathway that ran um, this river, and I'm guessing this river. These rivers were all like running through this one piece of land, right? I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know what that means. I'm just putting it out there. So that's something else. Let's continue. But we're looking for the Jordan, man. We're looking for the Jordan. We found where Canaan is. But where's Jordan? Where is the Jordan? Now, there's another map. You can see that there's water that's right here. That kind of stops near Lake Titicaca, funny enough. But it flows all the way up here. They say that this water comes from the Caribbean Ocean. But where does the water come from? Uh before it gets to the Caribbean Ocean, it comes from the Atlantic. So, again, I still don't know which one is the Jordan. 
you know, is this the Euphrates and this the Jordan? I have no idea, but I don't think so because these these lands were connected. But if they were to cr uh, to cross some sort of shallow piece of water or body of water like this, that actually would make more sense regarding the Jordan. Um, I, I'm going to admit that to you. It's a closer map. This is another map of it. The quality is not all that, but you can see that there's water that's about right here. Now I've seen, uh, what are they, what are they called? <laughs> oh, I don't know. People have said that the tribe of Reuben was actually over here in the eastern part of South America, and I was just like, well, that could just be because they migrated over there. Uh. But honestly, that could just be their land, right? It definitely could just be their land straight up. Because Canaan is not necessarily the only promised land, right? It's just it, Canaan historically was known as some sort of a coastal area of a sea. It was to the right of some sea of a, of a great sea, quote unquote. Today, they try, to, they try to say that that was the Mediterranean. That's not true. But, you know, the the oldest Bibles, they call it the Great Sea. And on the right side of Canaan was the Jordan. So, to me, um, for the land in South America, or even in North America, it's either the Jordan, if it's in North America, really, it's either the Jordan was the Mississippi or the Atlantic Ocean over here. And for South America, it's either the Jordan was this body of water or the Atlantic Ocean over here. And it's just so funny that both continents have huge inland seas that once were. So I'm proposing, were those the Jordan? Or was that the Jordan? Scriptures never calls it a river. I keep having to say this. The translators call it a river. They never called it a river. The word in Hebrew is Nahar. Nahar does not mean river. Nahar means body of water. It doesn't have to mean a river. Something else that I saw. Because, as you guys know, I propose that the, that Goshen, at least, was in this land right here. Um, we're going to get into it in probably the next video I do. I don't know if I'm doing it today, but they t it says that the children of Israel were in a quote-unquote faraway land in Brother of Jared. Right? They were in a faraway land. They traveled some ways, and the only place that I can see them coming from because again first they had to travel through the desert or the wilderness of zin through amalek and then they were outside the lands of judah and then they started you know being cowards and we had to take the long way around but what was this long way around that's what i'm saying egypt was over here we traveled across this somehow but this, it was probably shorter in some sort of way. Like these map depictions are not everything. But we traveled down. I'm guessing that Edom's land is probably probably right here. People don't want to hear that. But I keep getting getting drawn here. As well as here. Uh, what is it called again? Argentina. South Africa. This desert right here. Probably Edom's land, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just going to tell you what it is. So, I have to rethink some things, honestly, because, you know, the Midianites could be here. I think they're here. I honestly do think they're here. Or, or they could be here. But I just know that the Midianites were in some sort of mountainous area. 
So there's only so many places that these things can be taking place in. But I believe we're truly on a really nice track with what we're talking about. And according to my theory right now, um, if the lands of Gad and Reuben are here, and this was also connected to West Africa until so some sort of split happened, some of their lands are still here. But the lands of Moab, probably here. Ammon, probably here. And Midian are probably here. Right? Um, also, this is, I think this whole thing, honestly, was known as Ethiopia. If this was connected, then both the eastern part of South America, as well as, you know, the interiors of Africa, would, wouldn't that be known as Ethiopia? Could this river down here, could the Nile River actually be flowing into this river? And this river used to be what created the Amazon? I don't know. I don't know, but it's just interesting. All right, let's continue. He already went there. This is another sea. Now, we went over this. I believe this was the area of Ur and the Chaldees. But there are just so many things, man. We don't know what this place really looked like. So we got to keep looking into these different theories about the different oceans and seas that were around. So let's keep going. So they called it the it's the West African Amazonian ice sheet. So I'm, so again, they're saying that this was connected West Africa and you know South America. They were connected. And as we went over before, they say that the people of West Africa, or the, at least the Bantu, they said that they came from West Africa, but they don't know where they came from before then. So it's either they, you know, took boats over there from some other land. Or the land was connected. And you can see all these different similarities, these cultural similarities with uh, the people of Brazil and the people of Africa. Right? You can see these things. And they're also, quote unquote, blacker on the eastern side of the Americas for a reason. <coughs> Excuse me. There's another depiction that I thought was pretty good you guys can see that this would be a route that we could take you know away from egypt and maybe we wanted to take some sort of shortcut to get to horeb and we wanted to pass through edom's land and he was like no so we had to take the long way right i hope this is making sense this is why it took them so damn long instead of just going through here he greased us and made us go all the way around. So. So another part is just, it's just proof that these lands were connected. And how they were connected as well. Right? It's not just the tip of South America was connected to Antarctica. No, this part was connected uh, to this inner, into, into, into the interior parts of Africa. And this was connected to South Africa. This was connected to South Africa. Oh, well, this was connected to Antarctica. And, and Antarctica was connected to South, Afri South Africa. So you can see all this area is connected. This was a central point. So it to me, it makes sense that ancient Egypt was here. The headquarters, at least. Um, there was some sort of, you know possibly lower egypt in the eastern part of north america or maybe that wasn't egypt maybe that was babylon assyria <laughs> i don't know but the assyrians the babylonians and the egyptians the canaanites they're all kind of the same damn people you know let me see if there's anything else Yeah, I showed you guys these maps like a billion times already. God won a land, how it all connected at one point. Let's continue. See, stuff was connected. Let's keep going. Let's 
more studies showing that this land was connected. Okay, here we go. Let me see. I think it's in the next tab. So, Amazon rainforest may have once been a giant marine lake. Researchers con reconstructed the historical marine flooding of the Amazon rainforest using sediment cores gathered from eastern Colombia and northwestern Brazil. These maps show the maximum extent of floods during two separate periods. So you can see that, you can see how this looked. And, you know, other people have said that this actually flowed outside into the Pacific Ocean at some point. Right? But now, when we now look at the map of the Incan Empire, you know, now it starts to make sense because why would they stop? Like, why would their land stop right here? It's not just because it's covered in a rainforest. But it's literally that's what their land possibly went to. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you know, I've showed this a million times, but look at this map. Look at how look at where this water is. And then look at the Incan Empire map. Bro. Hold up. Alright, we're back. So now, to me, it kind of makes sense why this is so skinny, right? And why, why it stops where it does, right? It doesn't really intrude on these lands over here. Why? Is it because this was the Jordan? I don't know. But I don't know, man. We're going to keep putting these puzzle pieces together. Again, let's see if we got any more. Look, the Amazon basin originally emptied into the Pacific Ocean when South America and Africa were part of Gondwana. Excuse me. After the breakup of Gondwana, the Amazon found its exit blocked by the rise of the Andes about. 15 million years ago, a great inland sea developed, at times draining north toward what is now Venezuela, before finding its presence, is present eastward, out is present e eastward outlet into the South Atlantic. Gradually, this inland sea became a vast freshwater lake, and wetlands where sediment flattened its profiles, and the marine inhabitants adapted to life in fresh water. So, let's keep going, man. As you can see, it's called the PBUS system. And it emptied over here. Very, very interesting. I think that's it, actually. No, oh, I still got a little bit more. See, as I said, Canaan up here stretched all the way down here and you can see similarities um now, i mean when you put this all together now the scripture starts to make sense right chinnerith or kinneroth that's right here that's the great salt lake of utah going down into the salt sea is that the Peabus system is that lake titicaca i don't know but there's some sort of salt sea that's down here Salt sea that's up here, right? Chinnerith, 
Chenerith and the Dead Sea are all the same sea. It's not like the Salt Sea is not near Judah's land. That they're saying that because, you know, they don't have a place to put it, pretty much. But let's keep going. Do I have anything else? See, as you can see, they put the Dead Sea over here and the Sea of Galilee or Chenerith up here. But the Sea of Galilee, Chenerith, the Salt Sea is all this sea. You know, the Dead Sea and the Salt Sea and Chenerith is all one sea. There's a Salt Sea near Judah, Judah's land, but that's not the Dead Sea. Right? It's not the same thing, so... Anyway, you can see that, you know, down here we have Judah, even going over here, Beersheba, Ziklag, that's in Asia, Southeast Asia. So the tribe of Simeon, they're also in Southeast Asia, at least some of their lands, right? Judah's lands, it stretches all the way up into what I believe to be Ecuador, Benjamin's lands, you know, 